I want to talk about something a little bit uncomfortable, but hopefully I've got the right audience that can listen to stuff like that. I mentioned a while back that I have a church within called the IQ. I-C-U-E. Interesting. It's I see you. I'm thinking I see you. I see you. E. <laughs> I don't know what the E stands for. Yeah. Enough of the humor. Let's get serious, everyone. I want to talk about sex. No, I don't want to talk about sex in an entertaining way. I'm through entertaining. I did that a few seconds ago. And entertainment is subjective. You uh, either get entertained by what I say or you don't. And that's normal and natural. Devo has a song called That's Good. And uh, there's a line in there that says something. Um, Everyone's looking for the same thing. It's true. We're looking for the same thing. And that's good. Yeah, pardon me, Devo. Pardon me, Jerry. If I, Mark, Mother's Ba, if I got that kind of wrong. But I know what you're saying. You know, we're all looking for a good thing. And um, a good thing might not necessarily be so good lots of times. And that's what I want to touch on right now with the sex thing. Maybe maybe even pleasure in general. I think it's natural and human to want pleasure and to get pleasure. And I think it is necessary for our sanity to feel good. Um, it's natural for us to be in homeostasis, you know, to not be in pain. Um, we should not be in pain all the time. We're uncomfortable all the time. And we often are. You know, we're, we've got this baseline, instead of this baseline homeostatic feel good, many of us are in this homeostatic um, feel bad. We're in this, uh, you know, lower, low level uh, anger, low level anxiety, low level depression. And um, it's scientifically called a state of dysphoria, just a bad feeling in general. And in my mental wellness process, I have a uh, thing that says, um, feeling good and feeling bad are balanced and feeling okay. Now, uh, I have a little bit of a fancier way of saying that, but unfortunately I can't think of that off the top of my head. I'm having a 55 year old senior moment, but you get the idea. Um, well, okay. Well-being and dysphoria are balanced in emotional stability or okayness. And hopefully I've got an audience. I'm feeling a little self-conscious right now. Maybe it's from blessedly living with my blessed roommate because it seems like every time I try to talk to him about what I'm doing in my life, he kind of he kind of looks at me blankly like I'm going over his, his head. And I'm trying to comfort myself into believing that he's not it's not what I'm saying. He's getting up there too. He's 74 year he's 74 years old. He's having an even more senior moment than I am many times. Now the sex thing, you guys. <clears throat> the sex thing. <clears throat> sex is not a bad thing. Sex is a good thing. Uh, sex is supposed to feel good. I figured that out. And let me tell you why. Because if sex didn't feel good, sex would be just disgusting. Or we would be totally indifferent to it. I mean, who who wants to cuddle up with another body that, um, that, that, that has a funny smell who wants to cuddle up when we're feeling uncomfortable cuddling up in general, especially in the society we're, we're living in today. You know, who, who wants to, you know, the, the other instincts might take over survival instinct, uh, leave me alone. Um, defend your tribe, defend your body, defend your house, defend your, uh, whatever, whatever else, defend your property. We're not going to feel like cuddling and uh, making love. We're not going to feel like having sex if it doesn't feel good. In fact, if it feels bad, and lots of times it may feel uncomfortable, if it feels bad or uncomfortable, <clears throat> we are really not going to feel motivated to have it. And we know that sex gives us uh, STDs. We know that it, it leaves us feeling very confused emotionally if we don't know how to handle it psychologically. If we're not mature enough to deal with it mentally or psychologically, um, it feels really bad, actually. 
And there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on, even to the point where Hollywood can can inundate and intervene and make a movie out of it. You know, it's a, it becomes a murder uh, scenario. You know, it becomes a drama. By the way, I hope you guys are all safe. If you are a danger to yourself or to anyone else, turn yourself in. If someone else is a danger to you, um, we have a right to feel safe from our dark side. And uh, go see a mental health professional or call a crisis line. In the United States, it's 988. And in the uh, other countries, just Google, uh, if you're already on the internet, Google crisis help in my country. And uh, get some help. You're worth it. You are worth it. And um, learn how to love. Learn how to practice agape love. Look that up. Learn how to practice um, being safe. You know, learn communication skills. Learn uh, to deal with emotions. Uh, safely processing emotions. If you're not interested in what I'm saying, what are you doing on my channel, you guys? If you are interested, learn something new. Yes. Um... When we have sex for, for sheer pleasure and recreation and a pastime and entertainment, we defeat that purpose for having it. We don't bond. We don't, when we have offspring at all, uh, those children end up like me. They end up being unwanted or they end up, the parents end up being too busy to take care of them. The parents are, are usually uh, addicts, or they are trying to survive, or they are mentally ill too, or they are um, they're dealing with their problems, and children don't deserve that. And guess what children have to listen to from age four on, as I did? you got to understand that your father has a drinking problem. you got to understand that your mother is just depressed. you got to understand that grandma is just having issues and, and she can't come and visit tonight. you got to understand that grandpa doesn't feel like having children over because his house is a mess. Come on. Children are not going to understand that. And we shouldn't be expected to. The grown-ups need to act like grown-ups. And again, I'm not saying that to judge anyone. I'm saying that like, like, uh, like, like Jesus says, I'm here to save the world. I'm not here to judge. And I'm not even in my mental wellness process. In fact, one of the biggest mistakes I made in mental, in, in the mental health system when I was in there was taking it so personally when people were trying to help me. And I'll tell you why, because I didn't understand. I was still feeling like a little kid. That part of me still hadn't been developed yet because I was so, so busy trying to understand and understand and understand and understand all my life that I didn't even have a self. I wasn't even in touch with what was going on inside me. And I didn't understand myself. And I didn't understand. I did, of course, I didn't understand what other people were, were telling me. Of course, I didn't. I was in too much pain. So um, <clears throat> if we learn how to have sex for the right reasons, ladies and gentlemen, and that means learning how to love. That means learning how to know that there are other kinds of love, really, and on a somatic level. I was told that all my life. Oh, there's different kinds of love. Uh, your your Aunt, Aunt Jay just, just needs to go out and have a good time tonight. Well, she would stay up all, she would stay out all night and not come home until morning. And she was taking care of me. You know, she, oh, God, you know, have, being a parent is a lot of responsibility and she didn't want that. So I grew up learning that that sex was a bad thing because uh, oh we we just we just use it to mess around we we just use, everybody's got to have that drug everybody's got to have that that feel good that pleasure. Well, I also wanted to have pleasure playing jump rope and um, having my uh, kid friends over, and um, I didn't need to have sex to feel good. I was always curious about it. But, uh, cause especially cause I watched it going on around me all the time in the house. So, um, of course I got hypersensitive to it. You know, I was sexually abused. So, um, that's why it's called sexual abuse. Messing around with that God given, that God given pleasure that, um, is supposed to happen to, uh, get us to pay attention when we date, you know, have find, find a mate, you know, no matter what we are, LGBTQ or straight, okay? Here's a question. 
you guys may, may be asking, and, and I, I don't know the science completely, but I figured this out too in my process. Why do gay people want it? You know, gay people can't have babies unless uh, they, they um, do test tube or uh, have artificially done or adopt. Okay, let me tell you, I believe that God, God gave us gayness to slow down the population. If we were all heterosexual, the planet would be even more crowded than it is. And especially given the way we act towards each other and act towards, you know, sex, we, the way we abuse it all the time, I am not I wouldn't be surprised at why the planet is so damn popular. We pump out babies like rabbits for Christ's sakes. So there's your answer. You, you want to know why people are gay? You want to know why people are asexual? You want to know why people sometimes can't have children? Because God wants to slow down the population, for Christ's sakes, and get us to pay attention to why we love. How about, how about the family in the way of s spouses? How about just getting married? You don't have to have children. You know, you don't have to catastrophize every time you can't have children. You don't have to catastrophize every time your daughter or your son is gay or whatnot. So anyway... Sex is about expressing love. Sex is about having children. Sex is not all about, you know, entertainment. You know, it can feel good. It can look good. It can be be a beautiful thing. But please, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget what we're about and why we're on the planet. Be safe. Happy Saturday. My roommate's here. Bye.